What's happening, Fusion friends? Welcome to another episode. We got a fun one today, a fun unboxing because we got some stuff from Tackle Warehouse, got some stuff from Omnia, a package from an OG Fusion friend, Peyton Bates, and not wasting any time, starting with the first one from my guy up north, uh, up in Canada, eh? Element Custom Bates. So the cool thing about his stuff is, is he's making stuff you don't normally see. He's actually gonna be at the Winnipeg uh, Ice Fishing Show this weekend, November 4th and 5th. So stop by the booth, check him out, tell him Debo sent you because this one right here, oh my gosh, money. This one he calls the Wingding. This is the smaller 50 size, but he also has these in the larger 70 size. Look at that Wonder Bread spoon there in the gold. But for me and the way I fish around here uh, in the Midwest, I think this one's gonna be money for some pike, maybe some walleye. He said that's what he gets a lot of the, the guys up north, walleye and uh, you know pike guys, looking for something larger like this, the bigger size, a spoon. But it's got these cool two little blades that kind of flash off the sides, almost look like little wings on the side of it. Super sticky treble hook on the bottom. I love it, man. Stop by his booth, give him some love. And I'll link his uh, website below. Super nice guy. Um, he does ship down to the, the lower 48 in Canada and everything, so I'll leave his website below. Also has that smaller one in a white and pink with the crackle through it. Then he's got probably what he's most famous for, if you follow him on Instagram, uh, the mug shot, which is his version of a lipless. And I tell you what, it is a sick little lipless. He knows I like the purple, purple chartreuse there. You can see he's got the element custom baits on the nose there. Awesome looking little baits, three different sizes, I believe. There's the smaller 50. This is the 60. You can see he also sent me a cool cheetah pattern color in the 60. A little Finding Nemo, and these are glow too, awesome for ice fishing. And then kind of a spin-off of Wonder Bread. Then in the largest size there, the 70 size, you can see he's got the yellow, pink. Look at that, look at the foil on it. Kind of your perch, bluegill look. Another fancy foiled up type of Wonder Bread, look at that one. And then a cool red, almost like a Rayburn red type of craw. This one will be awesome in the spring. Element Custom Baits, check him out. Like you said, he does some awesome work. Super nice guy. Give him a follow uh, and check him out if you're at the Winnipeg Ice Fishing Show. Okay, I re-upped on some stuff from Omnia here. Uh, this is no surprise. Tequila Sunrise Berkeley Power Bait Worms. Eight and a half inch. I feel like these are hard to find from time to time. They had them on sale, so I bought, I don't know, I think six packs of them. Uh, you can never have enough Tequila Sunrise Worms. Also bought a couple packs of the Swing Impacts, the three and a half inch. That Tennessee Shad color is absolutely money around here. Load those if you've not tried them for like a, just a regular minnow type of, you know, mimicking swim bait. Those are perfect. And maybe I should mention they go awesome on the back of a chatterbait. People say, oh, paddle tails in the back of a chatterbait. If you still do that, you're dumb, you're missing out. There's a lot better options. I love this type of trailer, uh, a paddle tail as a trailer on a chatterbait, as long as it's not a tail that's too big with too much action. You can see there, the tail on these are tiny. You know, it sticks out from the back, it gives it that tail kick. Uh, but if you get too big and too large of a paddle tail on here, it can mess with the, the action of the bait. You won't get that hard vibration. So that's the only thing I will warn you if you're gonna use a paddle tail, don't use something too big. But I absolutely love a paddle tail, still use the heck out of them on uh, a chatterbait. And this is the new Evo. You can see there they've got the weight on the bottom of the head there. Heather. The blade, I forget what color this one is. It's the translucent color. I'll put it on the screen, but this one looks absolutely sick. It's got glitter uh, like encased on the, the blade there. There's the always good spot remover color. Some Lava Craw action with the red blade. Tried and true black and blue, again with the black blade. Oh, and look at that. It's got the bluish purple flake in it too. A little Hot Snakes action with the gold blade. Bama Craw with like a, a copper blade and glitter on it. That's kind of interesting. And last up, a Bama Bream with kind of a green pumpkin, gold, purple flake in the blade. I like how they uh, they kind of dressed up the blades a little bit. Now, I haven't got to test these out yet. I want to try to do that this weekend. I think I've got one more good day of fishing left. Um, give these a try. You know, you can slow roll these. You can bounce them on the bottom. You, know, you can almost yo-yo them too. Just let them come up and, and hit the bottom. Um, just because it's cold out doesn't mean you have to put the chatter baits away. I just fish them a little bit slower. Now my question is, if you've used the new Chatterbait Evo, comment below and let me know what you think of it. There's been some people that have said that it doesn't vibrate like the uh, like the jackhammer, which is the all hail greatest vibrating jig on the market now, I feel like people say, but there's a number of good ones out there. Let me know what y'all think of this one if you've had a chance to use it. 
Okay, next up, an awesome care package from my man, Braden. Now, he took the time to write a big, long letter to me. I freaking love when people do that. You know, it means something to me. I read every single one of these. Don't think I don't. Um, you know, people that watch me have followed me for a long time. He actually started painting. He was one of my first customers when I started selling on my website. So it's, it's kind of gone full circle. Super cool. Now, this is the part here that gets me. It was me, my videos teaching him how to use a bait caster, and my videos that helped him get the confidence to get out on the water again. This stuff means the world to me, Braden. You have been an OG follower. I appreciate the heck out of you, dude. Now, just so I get this off the side, like I said, he has started painting baits, which you'll see here. Circle City, which is his Tackle Co. lure company, sent me a cool shirt and a hat. Y'all probably saw me wear that on. I think that was the live last weekend. Awesome hat. But my man is also painting baits, and he does an absolute awesome job. Good work, dude. Look at this one. Got your kind of ghosty, pearly spook. A fun little jointed rat lure with the, uh, the rubber tail there. That one's pretty cool. It's got the lip on it. He knows about my love for purple, a really cool little like shad profile, but like a bluegill marked purple fade. That one looks sweet. A larger spook topwater walking bait. You can see he's got the awesome scales on there. It's kind of the neon toxic splatter all over it. Silver, I like that one. And then also a sweet little gizzard shad looking uh, kind of greenish dark toward the front. I like that one too. See through on the bottom, little orange. Awesome work, man. Like I said, he knows my love for purple. He's also a fan of the gooseberry color. If y'all have not heard me talk about gooseberry, which again, people randomly send me these and I don't know if it's like a Zoom area specific thing. I've never seen the old monsters in gooseberry around here ever. Trick worms, um, the craws or like the ultra speed vibe worms, whatever. I've had those, never have I seen an old monster. Usually I throw like the blackberry. There's another color, I forget what they are, but Oh my God, look at that. Like if you like dark black purple colors, this June bug, you know, type, this color kills around here. And the old monster, oh baby. Braden, again, my man, thank you so much for being an OG follower. I appreciate all that stuff. All right, next up, we got a, a little bit different change in the uh, the Senko game. If you like uh, a stick bait, love or hate Yamamoto, some people swear they're the absolutely best. Some people don't use them because they're a little bit more expensive. I go back and forth. I do think they are a really, really good stick bait, but they came out with the new five inch fat Senko. Excited to try these because they're a little bit beefier option. It kind of reminds me of the bulk that you get with the Reaction Innovations Pocket Rocket. Y'all have heard me talk about that one. A little bit bulkier, larger meal. You can cast these a little bit farther. You know, as a bank angler, sometimes when you're restricted to spots, um, there's a little bit of wind. Having one that's a little bit heavier, even just a little bit, you know, meatier, larger meal might be just a difference maker. Now, maybe it won't make any difference at all. I don't know. That's why I get the stuff to try it, but. That's the green pumpkin blue flake, love that color. I got one in the sexy shad, which is neat. Kind of that bluish up top, then bottom got kind of that frosted with the yellowish chartreuse green kind of flake through it. That's a neat one, good bait fish imitation. The tilapia magic, you've got like a green pumpkin with blue, pink, yellow, gold, like a number of different colors in there. And I think of like the big bite baits, um, tilapia colors where I first saw it, like they're fighting frogs, uh, that type of thing. Really, really good look to it, like that color. And then the watermelon copper orange red, a color I honestly don't throw a lot. Uh, I know it's a favorite of a couple guys around here when they talk about stick baits. Uh, I'm gonna have to give that a go. Let me know, you guys, you guys throw that color? Browns and oranges, I'm not huge on. Don't know why, I usually just default to like a green pumpkin or a black and blue, but yeah. Sort of the same, but not really. It's a stick bait poop lure category thing. It's kind of blown up, it's weird. This is the three and a half inch Bomba from Missile Baits. There's a number of companies that have these out. I've only tried a couple of them. The Yamatanuki also by uh, Gary Yamamoto. You all saw that a little bit while back. I unboxed some. Tried that and I was actually impressed with it. There's a couple things that I really like. You're gonna see a video of that coming up. Uh, the sound from that day was completely washed because my mic dongle thing that you plug into the GoPro was shot, so I have no audio. So it'll be a talk over kind of talking about the Yamatanuki, but this is Missile Bait's version of it. And John Cruz said he specifically came out with this because it's lighter. A lot of the other ones, like that one's, I wanna say like five eight seven eight something like that for the Yamatanuki. It's a really heavy plastic. This one's lighter, so he talked about, you know, skipping this under docks, throwing it around certain things where I wanted a little bit slower fall, but that same kind of turd look action to it. It kind of glides on the way down. It's interesting, almost like a fluke stick bait mix. That was the Bruiser Flash color. This one is their Ghost Shad color. You can see why it's named that, that kind of ghosty bait fish shad look. You get six of these in a pack. This is the Candy Crush color, which is 
a really cool natural green pumpkin, kind of a light peach, almost like a pink. I guess more of a pink, not a peach, reddish pink belly with a whole bunch of sparkle through it. Looks neat. You get six of these in a pack and they're a lot less expensive than like the Depths Cover Scat. I've got some of those. Chris Russ hooked me up and sent me some, um, but they're heavy and they're expensive. These a lot more affordable, so I'm excited to try them. Oh, and I have one more in the Superbug color, which is a green pumpkin, blue flake with like a black and blue up top. Love that Superbug color in the Missile Baits, like the D-Bomb, any of their stuff, love that color. Okay, the last plastic of the unboxing, the TRD Gobies. Now, I've heard of people saying they drop shot them, you can do a whole bunch of different stuff. When I saw these, I thought a perfect way to mimic like small bluegill. So whether that's on just like a little, you know, swim bait head swimming these around, um, whether it's on a Ned Rig, I think there's a number of different ways you can use these. Pretty cool little bait. It's got the little paddle tail back there, um, but it's not going to break the bank because it's almost like that dark sleeperish look to it. But I got those snagged all the time. So this, you can use your own weight, your own type of setup. I think going to be a lot better for bank fishing, um, whereas like the dark sleeper is more of a boat deal. So this one, I'll see what we can get cooked up on it. That's the copper truce color. I also got that in the Gobi Bryant, a little bit, a little lighter of a green pumpkin, got some orange black flake in there, a little purple flake, and then like an iridescent blue on the bottom, really neat. And the last color I got was green pumpkin Gobi. So that darker green pumpkin with purple, kind of the silverish gold flake throughout there. And like I said, it's a Laztec. So these are gonna hold up for a long time, catch a bunch of fish on them. Neat little profile bait there. Okay, and the last two we've got to finish out the unboxing are from Berkeley. New bigots from them. This is the dime. I got the 10 size and the 6 size. Got a couple of each of these to try. And really what they're trying to do is capitalize on the ability not to make easy open packaging. This is the pixie dust color. Uh, but capitalize on the ability to make those balsa-like baits in a plastic bait. Now, I do really like that they've got up inside here where it can't come off the depth. So that's a 6-foot diver. Um, you can see it's kind of a almost like a semi flat side, kind of rounded. It kind of reminds me of like a mix between a flat side and like a DT type deal to it. It's got the round bill there, but looks really good. But giving that balsa action to a plastic bait, balsa can be kind of tough to cast. Uh, they can be light, you know, they cannot hold up the best, they can break. So this is kind of trying to improve on that. There's a number of companies that have done this, is trying to mimic that balsa action, which is hard. That specific action you get from wood. Um, trying to translate that over into a plastic bait. So think like the Fritz side. I absolutely love the Fritz side. Awesome bait, awesome little flat side. And this one, it's got that rattle in there to help you when you cast to actually be able to send that thing out like a bullet casting, you know, a crank instead of a, you know, a balsa type crank. So that one looks really neat. I like the uh, the look and the, uh, the flash. Got the always popular chartreuse black back. Regular old honey shad, nothing too crazy on that, just your regular bait fish profile. And last up, they came out with some new frogs. I had to get some of these. Unfortunately, my frog in season here is over. I'm jealous of you folks down in the south that can still fish topwater, but this is the Berkeley Swamp Lord. It's a good looking frog, super soft um, rubber, plastic, whatever this is that they've made it out of. Very soft, very collapsible. They do have the heat shrink tubing there to help the water not get up in there. I got your Swamp Lord stamped on it. This is like the bone white color. I like this one because it's not a bright white. It's kind of that yellow, which I think is a little more natural. Hooks are good and sharp on it and they're thick hooks. They're not little tiny hooks. So I don't see any problem with these bending out. And one thing that I talk about, I never hear people talk about is the ability for the frog to move and turn out of the way. Because if you look at this, the legs are all jacked up. Don't pay attention to that. But if you look at this, with this collapse, that's all you've got for a hook set to get into that fish's mouth right? Especially with the weight there, the weights in the uh, the spot where the hooks hit. I know that's a problem, like a hookup ratio with a lot of frogs, but that's all you've got here. So in case you get that driven into them, as the fish shakes, moves, as you're fighting it back, that frog can spin out of the way. And how many times do you come up, um, you know, with a frog that does this, you get the fish up and it's got the frog turned around like that and the hooks are completely buried in it. So I think it makes a difference. I don't hear people talk about it. Maybe it's just a confidence thing and doesn't make a damn bit of difference, but I look for it. So there's your white frog. This is the Maverick color. You're all black with like purple kind of like glitter throughout it. And this is what I throw, I would say 90% of the time is an all black regular nose frog because you can walk it side to side hard and make it spit. So I usually tie on one of these and go for it instead of opting for like a popping frog. Uh, but I like that one. 
Then I also got their bluegill color. You can see it's kind of that pearly orange belly in the sides. And I think this is more of a deal when it's kind of in that clear water walking out along the sides of grass where they're actually getting a side look at that frog. If you're up on top of mats, low light, you know, in the really thick algae and stuff, I don't think they good uh, get a good enough look at it for this to matter. That's why I like an all black frog it creates a silhouette when they look up. But clear, clear water when that thing's walking, they can see the sides of it. So who knows? Maybe it, maybe it helps. And I did grab a couple of the popping kind. This is the Voodoo Black. To me, this is Hawkeye colors, huh? Black and gold, go Hawks. See the cup mouth on it there. I like them. I like the popping frogs. But like I said, most of the time, I go with just a regular pointed nose frog. And I always trim the legs. Like, I hold it even to the head like this and cut it just short of the head. So my legs would be like that. Maybe inch and a half-ish is how I like my legs. And then I also got a Honey Shad color to mimic, yes, Shad. So it's got kind of a... A little bit darker gold, black, glitter top with really the belly is what they're going to see most, that pearly red. So that's my that's my shad imitation. All right, fishing friends, comment below and let me know out of all those, were you most excited to see? Remember, it's probably not going to be top water and stuff that I can fish, but hopefully I've still got a couple days I can get out on the water. Comment below and let me know what was your favorite. As far as subscribe, fishing friends, has to be Mike and Braden. Thank you guys, Mike over at Element Custom Baits. Uh, Braden, I appreciate both you guys for supporting me, watching me, sending some stuff over to the channel. I appreciate you a ton. Um, and I'll link both of them below. I don't think I don't think the Circle City Boys have a website up. They're going to be doing that uh, soon. But all, you can always hit them up on Instagram. Um, tell them you saw them over here. They're good guys. But that's enough for me. I got to edit. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Mm -hmm.